Hey guys, it's Chase here. With all of the recent hype from the Splatoon 3 announcement, I'm sure many of you have been theorizing just what exactly the game is going to be like. I can assure you this also applies to me. I've been thinking a lot these past couple of days about what new things Splatoon 3 will introduce to the franchise. However, I've also been thinking about what will make a return from the previous two games in the series. With all these thoughts going through my head, I just have to share some of them with you guys. So, here are 5 things that I think will happen in Splatoon 3. Keep in mind, I don't necessarily want all of these things to happen, but I'm just trying to be realistic here. So yeah, not all of these predictions are necessarily going to be quote unquote good things. And number one is a perfect example of that. So I've been seeing a lot of people speculating that they will finally let you skip the news in Splatoon 3 or that they will just get rid of the news altogether. As much as I want this to happen, I have severe doubts that it will. Uh, if we look back to Splatoon 1, people already thought the news was annoying in that game. They then proceeded to make the news even longer in Splatoon 2. Plus, even with that aside, the ability to skip the news is something that could have easily been introduced in an update, but this didn't happen in either game. I think this shows us that the developers want the news to be a staple for Splatoon. They know that people don't like the news, but I don't really think they care. Again, I'm not saying that I want them to keep the news, but realistically, I highly doubt they'll get rid of it. In fact, they might actually make it longer. In both of the first two Splatoon games, we've had a total of four different ranked battle modes. There's Splat Zones, Tower Control, Rainmaker, and Clan Blitz, which made its debut in Splatoon 2. So going off of this, I think that it's reasonable to believe that we'll get at least one new mode in Splatoon 3. In fact, people discovered that there was already data for two unused ranked modes in Splatoon 2, being the Rocket Mode and 8-ball mode. However, both of these were scrapped for the amazing, wonderful Clan Blitz. But who knows, maybe we could see these modes make an appearance in Splatoon 3, or we will just see a brand new mode altogether. One other thing to keep in mind is that they could scrap a current mode. There's a lot of people who don't like Rainmaker or Clan Blitz. They very well could just replace one of these modes with a new one. It's hard to say what exactly they will do, but I'm confident that we will get a new ranked mode. This one pains me to say, as I literally specialize in duelies for Splatoon 2. I know some of you are going to think that this is a crazy prediction, but just hear me out. If we take a closer look at the Splatoon 3 reveal trailer, there's a couple of things that point me to this conclusion. Well, the most obvious thing is that there are no duelies in this trailer. There's not a single one in sight. But obviously, I'm not just basing this off of that, because there's other weapon classes that also aren't shown, like brushes or umbrellas. The other thing in this trailer that really makes me think that duelies are at least getting reworked is the new tech that they're adding. If you guys didn't know, this trailer shows off some new moves that you can pull off mid-battle which any weapon can do, these being the Squid Roll and Squid Surge. I'm not going to go in depth on what exactly these do, but they essentially give you more movement options. But looking more closely at the Squid Roll, isn't this basically what makes duelies unique? If they're going to let every weapon perform this kind of roll, where does that leave duelies? If they just keep duelies how they are in Splatoon 2, but also let them perform the Squid Roll, then that's going to be a bit ridiculous. You're going to have people just rolling all over the place. So that's why I think they're going to change how duelies work in some way. I'm not exactly sure how they could do this. Maybe they won't be able to dodge roll after they perform a squid roll for a certain amount of time, or maybe they just can't do the squid roll. Who knows? But the other option that we have to consider here is that duelies just might not even be in the game at all. Duelies played a big part in the advertising of Splatoon 2. Hell, it's even on the box art. I think it's possible 
that the developers would want duelies to be unique to Splatoon 2, so it has something to differentiate itself from the other games in the series. Again, we really have no idea what is going to happen to duelies in Splatoon 3, but I'm confident that they will be different than how they currently are in Splatoon 2. The hub world has always been a cool aspect of the Splatoon series. Just being able to roam around and see the people that you've previously played with, as well as shop for weapons and gear. Sadly, while the hub worlds were cool at first, you quickly begin to realize that there's not really that much to do in them. Yes, you can buy weapons and gear from the shops, but what happens when you reach the point where you own all of that stuff? You have no reason to go in there anymore. The only other building is the Shoal, which is for local wireless play, but does anyone actually use the Shoal? If you do, please tell me because I literally know no one who uses this, especially now during a pandemic. The only other things that are actually useful in the hub world is going to the crust bucket to use your drink tickets or going to see merch to mess with your gear slots. I'd like to see merch get his own building in Splatoon 3, and maybe along with that, they can expand the chunk system entirely. Maybe they can let people buy chunks in the shop, or something along those lines. But this leads into my main point, which is, I think we will get more buildings with different things to do. They might be shops, they might be mini games that give you rewards, I don't know. I just want more things to do in the hub world, and I think that the developers will deliver on this. This is definitely my most broad prediction, but I also think it's the most likely. The balancing in both Splatoon 1 and 2 hasn't been very good. Right now, if you didn't know, midline weapons rule Splatoon 2, which makes certain other weapons borderline unplayable. You also have the gear perk called Main Power Up, which lets some weapons kill faster than they're supposed to, but not other weapons. And I haven't even touched on the specials in Splatoon 2, where you have Ink Armor being ran in nearly every single comp, and Stingray basically ruining games by always being guaranteed to stop the objective. But all of this aside, I think the devs have learned. I think that they have learned from all of their experimentation with the first two games, to finally get it right this time. I'm not saying it's going to be flawless, and I'm not expecting it to be flawless, but I do think that it is going to be much, much better than it is right now. So there you have it, five things that I think will happen in Splatoon 3. Again, these are all just predictions, some of these I don't even want to come true. But just by using logic and reasoning, I think these conclusions are plausible. Overall, no matter what happens, I'm really looking forward to Splatoon 3, and I hope you are too. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more Splatoon 2 and 3 content. It would help me out a lot. Other than that, I hope you guys have a fantastic day and thank you so much for watching.